Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for Daily Devotions through Redeeming Life Fellowship. I've got my coffee here, and we're ready to continue our journey following the Revived School Reading Plan. Today, we're going to be jumping into the book of Colossians, and I want to offer just a very brief overview and a little bit of reading through the text of Colossians chapter 1. And a book like Colossians is, I think, uh, very relevant, very important uh, for us when we think about, I guess what you would say, like the nature of our Christian worship and our commitments, and I'll explain why. For the Colossians, the dilemma that's facing this church in this relatively small town, I think is actually very similar to the sort of things that you and I face uh, even as uh, 21st century American Christians, or wherever it is that you happen to be watching this. Um, if you're not in America, uh, God bless you for watching this. That's really, really, really awesome. So uh, we'll have to connect. It is easy for us to get lost uh, in our wanderings in this marketplace of spirituality and philosophy, where uh, especially uh, through the advent of uh, you know Google and our smartphones, um, about every type of stripe or uh, uh, brand of spirituality and philosophy and wisdom is really at our fingertips. And all of it can look uh, sometimes very enticing, but also very confusing. And uh, sometimes it emerges through the way of of, of pluralism, that is, there's a, a, a wide variety and distinction of different um, different religions and worldviews. There's universalism, which means uh, the approach that has a way of sort of reducing all of these uh, religions and spiritualities to uh, a central essence, as it were. Sometimes there's even syncretism that says, I like to take little bits of this spirituality and this religion and start fusing them together uh, to be able to create, as it were, my own personalized brand of spirituality. Uh, and then also, uh, even uh, if you wanted to push that all away, uh, there's still uh, competing uh, ideas and uh, uh, prevailing dominant philosophies within society that have a way of shifting our behavior and telling us where to go, what to value, things to do. And it's hard to, to oftentimes make sense of, of, of all of it. And as if that sort of thing wasn't hard enough, what <laughs> the problem perhaps you've had and I've had is saying, where does Christianity fit in the, the, this grand scheme of world religions, philosophies, and spiritualities. In what way uh, should I think about Christ, Christianity, the church, uh, his complete work on the cross, dealing with our sin and reconciling us to God? If those sort of things are true, how is it should I think about in regard this whole world that seems to be sort of bubbling over with spiritualities and, um, you know, steps towards spiritual enlightenment and progress. And this is the sort of thing that appears to be troubling the Colossians where they're uh, being confronted with some false teaching that is uh, uh, compromising the gospel. And so the, the, the question, I think, for the Colossians, and the same that we, we wrestle with, is that, is Christianity simply just another religion? Was Jesus just another religious teacher? And to cut through all of that confusion, uh, there's at least one central theme that you'll find in Colossians that I want you to be able to 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 wrap your minds around and that's this it's the supremacy of christ and that um what paul is trying to demonstrate for the colossians is that if you can see who christ is uh 
not just simply in his humanity, but also in his divinity, what you might call a high Christology. That is, it's important that we as Christians not just see Christ as our Savior, but Christ as our Lord and our Lord over all. And he's demonstrating that by, by painting this marvelous picture of the supremacy of Christ over all of creation. And so what I would like to do is uh, read, uh, get a picture of this, this, um, this masterful uh, um, depiction of Christ's supremacy uh, in Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 15. And we're just going to read it together. It says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Isn't that interesting paradox? The image of the invisible God. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, uh, what the, the, the picture that um, that Paul is, is is painting in there is designed to demonstrate um, a divine transcendence in Christ Jesus and in Christ alone that is unmatched in all creation if it is true that he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And look at this, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. In other words, throughout the entire world, we can see and grasp whether visible or invisible created things. And what sets Christ apart from all of them is that he is not created. <laughs> uh, that uh, th this is getting our minds wrapping around, wrapping our minds around Christ and his hand in creation pre before creation to eternity past. Uh, this is um, no mere religious teacher if, if Colossians is right. And it says... And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Let's continue. It says, And you, who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you the Colossians, you and I as well, holy and blameless and above reproach before him, if indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister." So you can see how when Paul is painting this masterful picture of the supremacy of Christ, that when that image is fixed in their minds, that is to help them to not shift away from the gospel, to not fall prey to hollow and deceptive philosophy that is going to talk about tomorrow in chapter 2, to not... Uh, um, become subservient to this uh, stoichia, uh, this elementary principles or spirits of the world that you were held captive to before. So I think it's important that we see what Paul is demonstrating for, for the Colossians, that when we say that we follow Christ and that we worship Christ, uh, and then when we say that he is Lord, that... Um, that he is indeed not just 
Lord over this small domain uh, of, of our lives, or even Lord of the church, but, but indeed Lord over all creation. And he is the one who we worship and who we love wholeheartedly and we serve daily as his sons and daughters. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you haven't already, do please click subscribe uh, to this YouTube channel so you get me daily notifications to follow along with the reading plan. Uh, I hope to see you uh, this uh, coming Sunday when we will be gathering together here uh, to discuss uh, Philippians or Philippians. Hello. Philippians is put aside going to Colossians. Uh, Colossians chapter four. Uh, and I would like to, to pray that we would do as the Colossians will, or Paul commands the Colossians to do in uh, um, chapter three, uh, beginning or in verse 17, it says, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. God bless you all. Take care, and I will see you next time.